So this is 1.7. So we can start right away with the definition. We need a non-empty set. Now what we have in mind here is to give a list of subsets a sub-collection of the power set of capex and just label them as being open. Well, then we need some such collection and tau, a sub-collection of the power set, where is the collection of all subsets of capex. Now we refer to tau as a topology on X if the following are satisfied. O1, here this is not zero, open. These are the open set properties. Well, if tau is to represent all open sets, then the first condition here says phi and x must be members of tau. Two. Well, if you take any non-empty collection of sets from tau, then their union should belong to tau as well. It's the translation of this to here. If G alpha, say alpha in I, is a sub-collection of tau, if each of these belongs to tau, where i is just a non-empty set, an index set, then the union of G alphas, alpha in i, that will belong to tau. That's the second condition. The third condition is about, well, when we consider openness, the finite intersection of open sets. Well, the intersection of finitely many open sets is open again. But if I just express that for two open sets, well, that that holds for any finite sub-collection of open sets, that follows. Because if A and B in, are in tau, if that implies A intersection B is in tau, well, if I take A, B, C, then A intersection B is in tau. I can take the intersection of that with C, that will be in tau as well. And so by induction, this more general statement will follow. So here, if A and B are members of tau, then A intersection B, that will be in tau. 
when tau is a topology on A, on X, I'm sorry, on X, we refer to the pair X tau as a topological space. Given a topological space X tau, we refer to a set in tau as being open with respect to tau. A in X is said to be closed with respect to tau if X minus A that's open with respect to tau that is, it's a member of tau. <clears throat> well, of course, we have a whole class of topological spaces. We know that. Because if we start with the metric space, and if we consider the collection of all subsets of that space, which are open with respect to the given metric, that's a topology. That's what this is. So let's first note that down. Let's write that as a proposition. Let XM be a metric space. And denote by tau sub M the collection of all open subsets of X with respect to N. Just this proposition says, in view of that definition, now, tau m is the topology on x referred to as the topology induced by m. Proof? Well, we have already done it here. And we will make no distinction between xm and x tau m. They will stand for the same. Okay? Well, one is expressing that as a metric space. The other is in terms of the induced topology, but for our purposes, they're the same, okay? 
Now, we'll see examples, but as in the previous abstraction steps. Now here, a natural question is whether the notion of the topological space is genuinely more general than that of a metric space. Because if we start with the topology on a non-empty set, and if every topology on a non-empty set is inducible by some metric, well, then they would be the same, and there would be no need to introduce a new, a novel notion. But as you expect, well, the notion of a topological space will be more general, and we'll see that in our first example. X be any non-empty set, be a non-empty set. Now, a topology is a subset of the power set of this. Well, the condition is that it contains the empty set and the entire space as well. So, Two natural candidates to be checked, whether they yield topologies or not, is the smallest subcollection of the power set, which will be a candidate for a topology. That will be since that's a condition given. Well, will it? Let's ch check right away. Well, it satisfies this condition. It contains phi in x. Well, there you have any collection of open sets that will consist of empty sets and the entire space. Well, if the collection consists of the empty set only, if all G alphas are equal to the empty set, then the union will be the empty set, which is in this collection. If it contains at least one copy of cap X, the union will be cap X. It's in here as well. What about the intersection? If you take any two members in here, they both might be the empty set. The intersection is the empty set. They both might be cap x, the intersection is cap x, or one might be the empty set, the other cap x, the intersection is the empty set. Now, set tau 1 equal to this collection, and check that Tau 1 is a topology on X referred to as the indiscrete on X. What's the other extreme? Well, you can declare all subsets of cap X as open. That is, you can take tau equal to the power set. Now set tau to equal to this. Does this satisfy these conditions? Well, since everything is in tau, in particular, the MC set and the entire space are there, but no matter what sub-collection of that you take, 
they're all in tau, well, the union is a subset of capex, thus a member of the power set as well. Likewise, for intersection. Now, tau 2 is easily seen to be a topology on X. Does this topology remind you of something that we did last hour? The discrete metric. The topology that the discrete metric induces is just this topology. So that's why this is referred to as the discrete topology on X. It may not be clear by what we have done so far why this metric or this topology is referred to as discrete. But we'll see that next week. Well, why this deserves the name, there is no ambiguity why this is discrete. But there is some metric which induces tau 2. Now let's ask the same question for tau 1. Well, it may depend upon what capex is. Well, if capex is a singleton, well, you have the empty set and the set consisting of A, which is the entire space. Well, that's inducible by a metric, well, there is just one metric on that, M, if the single member of the set is lowercase x, M x x is equal to zero, and singleton x and the empty set are both open and closed, so that's metricable. But if x has at least two distinct members, then it will not be induced by a metric, but before going through that, let me introduce the notion of metrizability, and then I'll stop. We say that X tau is metrizable if there is some metric M on X such that M induces tau, that is, such that tau M is equal to tau. We'll see that the indiscrete, metri uh, indiscrete topology is not metrizable if this has more than one member. And we'll see other metrizable and non-metrizable topologies next time.